coming up from the Northeast Live Studios in Guwahati. Northeast tonight with Wasbi Rusan. Welcome to Notice Tonight, the show that decodes the region. The verdict for the 29-member Garo Hills Autonomous District Council elections are out, viewers. The opposition Congress has emerged. The largest single party winning 12 seats followed closely by the NPP with 11 seats. The BJP has won two seats, the Garo National Council won, and three seats have gone to independents. This means that, as expected, it has been a very keenly contested poll battle between the NPP, the dominant ruling party in Meghalaya, and the state's main opposition, the Congress. Yes, it has been a fractured verdict as none of the parties have touched the halfway mark of 15 seats. But it is also a fact considered by none other than Chief Minister and NPP leader Conrad Sangma that there was a lot of anti-incumbency against the outgoing council members. That is the primary reason why incumbent chief executive member Dipul Marak of the NPP and several other sitting council members have faced defeat. But viewed from another angle, the NPP has fared rather well considering the massive anti-incumbency against the outgoing council administration headed by the NPP. The NPP had ruled the erstwhile council with 10 members followed by the Congress with 7. The NPP had the support of independents and one BJP member in the erstwhile council. Now the big question is whether the state governor would invite the Congress as the largest single party to form the council administration. The NPP, BJP and UDP are all part of the MDA coalition in the state. But all these parties fought individually and against each other at the GHADC polls. But Will the NPP and BJP unite now and seek the help of independents? The chances are very high. The Congress too will target the independents. This then would mean that independents, the three of them, besides the lone Garo National Council member, would play the role of kingmaker. To discuss the broad implications of the GHADC poll verdict, I am joined tonight by NPP State President Dr. W. R. Karluki, who is an MP. I also have State Congress Leader Ms. Ampere in Lingdo, State BJP Vice President Bernard Marak, who won the Tura seat in the GHADC, is also live with me. And joining me as well is Biplop Day, Northeast Live correspondent in Garo Hills. I'm also joined by our news editor, Nabaran Guswami. All right, uh, let us now go to Meghalaya, Chief Minister and NPP National President Mr. Conrad Sangma, who is at this point in time busy meeting the newly elected district council members in Tura. Remember viewers, he has been camping in Tura for several days now, first uh, carrying out the election campaign, overseeing the voting, and now of course on result day today. Uh, let, let us go to Conrad Sangma, who is, who is on the phone line uh, with me. Uh, Mr. Conrad Sangma, welcome. It has been a very keenly contested battle, Mr. Conrad Sangma, as far as the GHADC results are concerned. Your reactions to this because your party managed to win 11 seats and the Congress, of course, emerging the largest single party with 12 seats, Conrad Sangma. So we accept the mandate that is given by them. Yeah, I think first of all, uh, we need to respect the mandate, uh, you know, given by the people. So we accept the mandate that is given by them. Uh, clearly, there has been a vote uh, uh, in an anti incumbency for the uh, the earlier EC, uh, which was run by the NPP. So, which is very clear from the fact that all the sitting uh, MDCs, uh, not only from our side, but a lot from the other side also have lost. So there was uh, quite a strong anti incumbency against the old uh, executive uh, committee uh, in general. So that is what uh, it seems like. But of course, uh, you know, we have to, as I said, uh, need to, as a party also, we need to look into our own performance and see where things have gone wrong, maybe 
from our side is a party also because there are different shades when it comes to the political scenario and different factors so we need to understand all those factors and see how it uh, went forward but clearly there was a uh, voice and mandate uh, against the anti incumbency against uh, the old uh, flock that was there right. and it is clearly visible from the fact that majority have lost whether from the ruling or from the opposition uh, now you see, Mr. Conrad Sangma, two of your alliance partners, the BJP and UDP, were contesting and they contested uh, on their own against each other. Your party won 11 seats, BJP won, of course, two seats. So now you have, uh, if you take the combination, if you look at the state alliance, you have got 13. How is it going to work out as far as the council, council is concerned? We will have to discuss with them. Uh, as I said, uh, you know, government at the state level uh, is, is uh, though we are in alliance, uh, it's, uh, it's a, the different factors that uh, uh, come into being uh, at the district council level, which is similar when you go to the uh, Khasis and Jensis also. So keeping all those factors in mind, we'll really have to see and work with uh, our partners and uh, figure out if we can find out a common platform with all of them. Uh, there are some independents also who have given us indications that they want to support. Uh, so we will see as the numbers come in and as we uh, reach out to others, we will see that uh, how the discussion goes. Right. Now, now, will you allow the constitutional process to go ahead? Because, uh, you know, the tradition is that the largest single party is invited by the governor to form the administration. That will be on the, the, depending on the governor. So the governor will take a call on that. So uh, it really depends on how he looks at it. And whatever the governor decides, we will respect that. Now, are you hopeful, Mr. Conrad Sangma, of working out uh, some kind of a mechanism, reaching common ground with the BJP? Uh, they were very critical of uh, the functioning of the ZHADC. They, they took the lead in talking about corruption. Uh, for example, Bernard Marak even went to the extent of filing an RTI. Uh, definitely be hopeful. Uh, we are in talks with uh, many of them. And uh, we will see. It takes a bit of time to talk to everybody and discuss. So once the discussions are done, once we are able to bring everybody on the same platform, then uh, we'll be able to really give a better picture of them. Now, uh, Mr. Chief Minister, you had said during your election campaign that this election is going to be very critical for your party and that it will be a test of the performance of the MDA government headed by you. Uh, has the verdict reflected this? How do you look at it? Uh, it's a mix of main things, definitely, because uh, number one, as I said, it has been um, the council's overall performance. So the council anti incumbency was very strong. 32, 32 months of not giving salary does, you know, impact the overall, uh, you know, picture that is there in the public. So that's, uh, that has really affected us a lot. Uh, we strongly feel that uh, we have been able to build up as a party and as right. a government uh, and show what we have done. And that has helped us to... Uh, repair the damage to a large extent. But I guess that was not enough for us to be able to cross the halfway mark. Uh, but whatever the mandate is, we accept it. And as I said, most importantly, we will work forward uh, to improve things, whether it's at the state government level or the district council level or at the party level. Well, uh, you have been saying during the day that there have been a very strong anti-incumbency against the earlier council or R12 council. But, uh, you know, despite that, your party, the NPP, has performed well, isn't it? Uh, yeah, that's what exactly I'm trying to say, that uh, that was a huge anti-incumbency. When you have almost uh, 32 months of non-payment of salary due to many, many reasons, I don't want to go into those, uh, then obviously the, you know, it reflects a lot on the uh, electorate. So in spite of that, uh, as I said, we were able to bring up things, uh, which uh, does reflect that the government has uh, done a bit of damage control in terms of its performance uh, from the state government point of view. Uh, so it was a tough election from day one. We have always, and that's the reason we worked very hard. Uh, we're not fully satisfied with uh, the outcome. We expected that we'll cross the halfway mark just a bit. Uh, but that doesn't happen, but that's fine. As I said, it's, it's part of democratic, democratic process. It's part of election. Uh, what is most important is now how we take it forward. So we'll now work at, at it, and we'll try to get all the uh, like-minded parties together and individuals together to form up an Right. Finally, uh, Mr. Conrad Sangma, can you assure the people of Garo Hills and the state that if you are able to form the administration in the ZHADC, you are going to address exactly these issues raised by your alliance partner and the opposition alike? Yes, obviously we have been trying to address those issues for a very long time. As you are aware that uh, autonomous district councils are autonomous in nature. And so therefore, uh, you know, they have their independence, they have their financial independence. 
So it's not always possible for the state government to intervene in everything. But we guide them. We ensure that we always are there to support them and help them. But it cannot be something where the government of uh, state government will keep funding, uh, you know, at an unending level. Uh, so those kind of things are very, very uh, big and challenging. And, uh, and we went ahead to these people in the election and told them that, well, the changes need to be made. It has to be a party that has got the power at the state level to be able to do that. And that's the uh, pitch that we had put to the people. But as I said, uh, you know, the, the past records uh, and the difficulties that the council has had in the last few months uh, and years has really, uh, you know, been a big factor in this uh, overall result that came out of the Right. Uh, thank you very much indeed, uh, Mr. Conrad Sangma, for speaking to Northeast Live uh, on a busy day like today when the Garo District Council results have been out once again. Thanks indeed. Now, I will soon be joined. I will soon be joined by Veteran Congress leader and former Chief Minister, Mr. Dr. Mukul Sangma. But before that, before that, uh, I, let's go to our panelists uh, very quickly before we bring in uh, before bringing Dr. Mukul Sangma, uh, Dr. Karluki, the, the state president of the NPP, uh, Dr. Karluki, you've heard just just heard the chief minister saying that there was a strong anti-incumbency against the erstwhile Garo Council that was headed by your party. Uh, so, so do you think that was the only reason that you did not perform as well as you might have expected? I think that is the main reason that uh, of party fail, especially when we fail in areas where we are very strong, like East Garvilles and North Garvilles. These are always a bastion of the NPP. So like the, most of our leaders, chairman, EM and deputy CM was from that side. So I think that is the, that is the main swing that, uh, you know, the Congress which uh, was one, uh, one MDC ahead of us. But just a little correction, Mr. Waspir. I think the district council is not the governor to invite. The governor will appoint an administrator and then election will be held in the election to the chairman post. And then later on, the chairman will conduct the election for the post of CM. So that the governor will not have to call anyone for him to appoint an administrator and election will be held. All right, I take that point from you, uh, Dr. Uh, Karluki. But the point is, now, you know, you have your alliance partner, BJP, winning two seats. Uh, as we know, if we look at the arithmetic of the results, the Congress has emerged as the largest single party with 12 seats. But technically, it is the Congress who should be invited to form the administration, isn't it? But if we look, no, no. At, fr if we look at from the other angle, Dr. Karluki, your alliance partner, BJP, has also won two seats. But the BJP is saying uh, during the day that they, they, they may or may not to be automatically a part of uh, the NPP BJP alliance as in the state. Again, I, I, I stand corrected. If I'm right, it is not the governor to invite. What the governor did was appoint an administrator, and the administrator will call for election of the chairman. The, if, like in, in the case, the chairman first is elected, and then the chairman will conduct the election of the chief executive member. But will you take the support of the two BJP? Will you d definitely would like to have the two BJP members with you, isn't it? Well, the, like what our leader has said, we are open to our partners in the <clears throat> alliance partner in the state. But Dr. Karluki, isn't it strange? Isn't it strange that BJP is your alliance partner in the MDA, but you still are not sure? You cannot automatically bank on the support of your two BJP members as far as Garo Hills is concerned. That sounds strange. No, no, the thing is like, the thing is they have to make their own decision. No, we cannot just force on other party. They'll make their own decision. Are you, are you, are you going to indulge in some kind of arm twisting because BJP is an alliance partner in the state? No, we don't believe in arm twisting, but we believe in you know, at least a friendly, friendly gesture. Okay, I'll come back to you, uh, Dr. Karluki. Let me quickly go to Mr. Bernard Marak, the state vice president of the BJP. Uh, Bernard Marak has uh, come up with a major upset today, winning the Tura seat, defeating the NPP candidate Samford B. Sangma uh, by about 500 votes. Uh, Mr. Bernard Marak, congratulations and on winning the Tura seat. What does this victory mean for you? Uh, it means uh, uh, justice 
Actually, the people of uh, Tura has voted for justice because the way things are prevailing in district council and the backlog of salaries in the district council and so much of corruption in the district council, it has actually compelled the people to choose a leader who will be able to uh, rectify the issues in the district council. So that is where the uh, voting of the people has actually focused this time. Right. Uh, Mr. Murak, you know, you were also among those who vociferously raised the issue of alleged corruption in Garo Council. You had also filed an RTI application that brought the issue to the public domain. Are you a happy man today? Yes, very much. I am very happy because the people of Tura has put their confidence in me. And they have uh, put that faith in me to lead the uh, council in revamping the council, in bringing about the changes to the council. I'm very oh, happy, yes. Right, a happy man there. Uh, he, you, you have reasons to be happy, Mr. Bernard Marak. Uh, don't go away, I'll be back. Uh, let me go to uh, Tura, from where I am joined by North East Life correspondent uh, Biplab Day. Biplab Day, you are the man on the ground. You have covered the entire campaign, Biplab. Uh, you know, was, was, the, was the verdict on expected lines according to you? Because uh, Dr. Mukul Sangma, uh, Mr. Conrad Sangma, everybody was saying that, you know, the, Conrad Sangma was saying it is anti-incumbency. That is the reason why uh, they did not get so many seats. Mukul Sangma uh, had earlier during the day, he said there were a lot of rebel candidates in the Congress. Therefore, they did not get. So what about, what about you? What do you think? Is, it, is the verdict on expected lines? Definitely, the verdicts are uh, completely been on expected lines. We had uh, expected a uh, fractured verdict, you know, wh wherein uh, now, of course, uh, the Congress in between may have missed a, a few tricks because uh, there were two candidates that had tried on a Congress uh, for a Congress ticket, but uh, they did not get, and uh, one of them won as an independent, whereas the second one, Brigadi Mara, he came, he came second, very close second. So if the Congress had actually played his cards properly, it would have actually been on 14 seats instead of 12 runs. Right. Uh, I'll just come back to you, Biplab. Uh, stay on. Let me turn to you, Nabaran Goswami. What does this verdict mean overall in the st overall state context? Uh, because, you see, it, it is a very significant uh, verdict as far as the Congress is concerned. Uh, you know, who knows, uh, the NPP being the ruling party, they may still be able to, you know, uh, cobble up a coalition, is still able, able to stitch up a coalition. But as far as the Congress, even if uh, at the end of the day, they are not able to uh, form the administration in Gara Council, but this victory will mean a lot, isn't it? Because they are the opposition party in the state. They are not in power. Still, they have managed to emerge as the largest single party. Absolutely, Vasbi. There are two ways of looking at this verdict, both from the Congress's point of view and the NPP's point of view. First of all, the verdict says the Congress is still at par with the NPP as far as Garo Hills is concerned. In fact, it has won one seat more. Secondly, uh, from the NPP's point of view, as uh, Chief Minister Conrad Sangma, the NPP national president himself, has admitted that there was heavy, massive anti-incumbency. Despite that, the NPP has managed to get 11 seats, which means the NPP has also done very well. And this verdict, having said that, now this verdict uh, leaves the 2023 assembly elections uh, it, 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 it throws the gates wide open. It could be anybody's polls. Both are on an equal level playing field. Uh, see, this comes at a time when the Congress, if you see in the entire Northeast, the, 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 the Congress is, has, has, has been losing everywhere, be it the district councils, be it the assembly elections, be it the Lok Sabha. And here is a state, Meghalaya, where the Congress, despite everything, has held on to its fortress. Yes, it has lost a few MLAs, uh, some to natural causes, but... But, but it has improved upon its performance last absolutely. time. Last time it had won seven, absolutely. and this time it has won but again, 12. But again, we have to see that last time, it was again when the Congress government, the Congress that government was in power, the NPP had won 10, and now the NPP is in power again. The Congress has improved its standing. Absolutely. Very interesting observation there uh, on how uh, things are changing as far as the, the Meghalaya, for that matter, Garo Hills is concerned. Uh, Dr. Karluki, uh, you know... 
I mean, do you think there is enough reason to introspect at this time? Uh, because uh, the elections to the state assembly are about two years from now, one and a half to two years, uh, you are having the state assembly elections. But the question is, uh, the fact that, you know, you were not able to form a comfortable uh, majority or for that matter, not able to reach the halfway mark. Do you think there are a lot of things to introspect as far as the NPP is concerned? Yes, every election we have to introspect. Especially, you know, like the, we like the, this election, it it doesn't go on expected line. We, we every party would hope that we get a majority. So I think yes, introspection is very much needed. Absolutely, Dr. Kaluki, don't go away. I'm now joined by veteran uh, Congress leader and former Meghalaya Chief Minister, Dr. Mukul Sangma. Dr. Mukul Sangma too has been an extremely busy man today, uh, trying to meet his own uh, district council members and trying to open lines of communication with um, the three independents and of course, the Garo National Council. And who knows, I'll not be surprised if he's also talking to the two BJP members despite the ideological differences. Uh, Dr. Mukul Sangma, uh, first of all, congratulations. The and welcome to Notice Tonight. <coughs> sure, it's a pleasure to be. Uh, Dr. Mukul Sangma, the Congress has emerged as the largest single party winning 12 seats. Has the results been up to your expectations? Well, we are short by uh, quite a number of seats, so definitely uh, the expectations were <coughs> to cross the halfway mark to have the absolute majority. But obviously, there are always certain elements of surprises in uh, such an electoral battle. But uh, nevertheless, I would like to thank the people who have uh, really um, reposed their faith and confidence upon the Indian National Congress and the leadership and our commitment towards the people of the state. And at the same time, I would also like to congratulate all the uh, candidates who have been duly elected and uh, declared as elected. Absolutely. Now, Dr. Mukul Sangma, what does the verdict really mean? It has indeed been a very keenly contested battle between the Congress and NPP. Well, uh, obviously, this verdict is a reflection of the mood of the people as well as, you know, the overall, <clears throat> uh, I must say, the aspirations of the people which revolves around uh, the way we govern the state, the, right. way, the way we run an institution. Uh, in last preceding three years, uh, there has been complete mismanagement of the uh, Garut's Autonomous District Councils. There has been allegations of rampant corruption. And those were the issues and people have spoken. And I'm sure uh, it uh, definitely sends a strong message to everyone concerned that it is not something whenever an issue of corruption, alleged corruptions are uh, in circulation, uh, people uh, definitely will not tolerate because corruption has been... Uh, the reason for, uh, I must say, many of the nations have been destroyed because of corruption. And I think there is one uh, enemy that everybody has to come together and fight against. Now, you see, there was huge anti-incumbency against the erstwhile council. Even the incumbent CEM, Dipul Marak, belonging to the NPP, lost. But despite that, the Congress failed to cross the halfway mark. Why has it been so? Yes, definitely, as I have said, there are certain elements of surprises. There are certain factors in uh, any electoral battle. We belong to um, uh, one of the biggest uh, political parivar, Indian National Congress. We had many uh, aspiring candidates who wanted to be the uh, candidate or the official nominee of the party. And obviously, dealing with them uh, when there are four or five aspirants for one constituency, uh, and uh, when we decide in favor of one nominee, then uh, dealing with the rest of them has always been a difficult job. I spent plenty of time talking to them to convince them, look, when you're fighting a battle, that's a time when we must unite. And uh, if the uh, whole result to fight uh, is for the same cause, and if our priorities are same, then we must come together. But it's difficult. So we have quite a substantial number of rebel candidates and who have obviously uh, eroded our uh, quite a substantial number of votes. Quite a significant statement made by Dr. Mukul Sangma there. He said that the Congress had quite a number of rebel candidates and that uh, played, and those candidates played spoiled sport. Now, now, Dr. Mukul Sangma, do you expect the governor or his representative to invite the Congress as the largest single party to form the council administration? Absolutely. 
that's the spirit of democracy. And uh, we do have, uh, uh, you know, other um, uh, friends who have been elected and then uh, like-minded people who, who take the issues uh, collectively uh, in the best interest of the state and the people. We're talking to a few independents who have been elected and also one lone uh, elected member from one of the regional parties, the Garo National Council. So hopefully, I think we'll prevail in our discussion. Um, uh, but at the end of the day, we are not only uh, forming of executive committee or otherwise it's not the most important priority. The priority is to actually demonstrate our resolve for the people of the state. Right. Uh, you know, the NPP and the BJP have fought separately, but they are part of the coalition at the state level. Therefore, do you think uh, that they stand a better chance to shed their differences and team up at the council? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I will not be able to speak on their behalf, but uh, right. from the way the issues have been taken up, I don't know how uh, they will be actually able to... Uh, really uh, reconcile with the kind of stand they had because the allegation of corruption uh, in respect of a uh, number of programs which were not properly implemented after the uh, special fund was released to a Garo's Autonomous District Council during my time as a chief minister. But that was in 2015-16 uh, when uh, 100, and, 100 crore and 71 lakh uh, rupees was released to GHDC in order to uh, implement number of programs uh, and uh, that is where the bone of contention is. And there has been ramp, uh, allegation of rampant corruption. And the, these are under investigation, by the way. So uh, if the priorities are to uh, root out the evil of corruption from this particular place, I, I know that they should be coming together. Right. And now the independents are obviously going to be king mecca. Uh, you are obviously in touch with them. Yes, we are. We are. Because at the end of the day, uh, uh, after uh, any election, it will be required for every political party to make an endeavor to bring all together. And if we are having uh, uh, you know, similar objective, if the priorities are same, then we must come together. Now, what about the possibility of working together with the BJP? They have won two seats. See, besides uh, the other issues, you know, we have always have also looked at the ideological issues. Therefore, uh, talking about uh, joining hands with BJP, obviously, you know, uh, it, uh, the same, same rule applies here. And uh, therefore, uh, uh, it is uh, not necessarily necessary for us that we should be, uh, you know, hell-bent in forming the executive committee. But our intention is to uh, engage with people and show that we still play whatever role is assigned to us, whether... Uh, as a party to form the lead the executive committee or otherwise. But we will, we will respond to our call of duty in consistent with what is the aspirations of the people and the interests of the state. Absolutely. Finally, Dr. Mukul Sangma, would you say the doors of the Congress are open to anyone who wants to work with you to run the Garo Council? See, when we are talking about this district council and then we are 12, we are short by 3-4, and therefore, uh, we are talking to all those friends who are aligned to our uh, approach to governance and our uh, uh, very important aspects of the ideology, which we believe is the uh, main uh, power that glue the people of the country together. Right. Uh, Dr. Mukul Sangma, thank you very much indeed for speaking to me on Northeast tonight. Thank you for having me. Pleasure. Uh, I'll have to go for a break, but before that, very quickly, Dr. Karluki, uh, you know, you have heard that corruption has been the one of the main issue. Dr. Karluki, uh, your chief minister has also said that it was this anti-incumbency that cost your party heavily. That is the reason why you could not reach the halfway mark. Now, if you are able to run, if you are able to stitch up a coalition and, and get hold of the council in the days to come, will you make sure, how will you make sure that, you know, these are issues that are taken care of? How will you address these issues of corruption, non-payment of salaries, lack of development? What will be your approach? Well, Mr. Vasbi, every party would not like corruption. I think no party would like to see that corruption flourish in a state. 
because it harms the future of the state. Well, by regard to the salary, I think the Chief Minister is very clear that the District Council is an autonomous body. We, the state government tries its level best, but there are certain, certain principal or areas in which the state government could not intervene. Uh, Nabarun, how do you see the two leaders, both of them saying that, you know, they are in touch with the independence? Clearly, Vasbir, the independents have turned out to be the king makers again. And uh, definitely, uh, each, each, both the Congress and the NPP camps will try and reach out to them. It, we, we, we are to see who makes the first move, what are the inclinations. Uh, but clearly, as, as mentioned, uh, well, we have had one independent who, who was trying for a Congress ticket. Maybe he would try to opt for the NPP, but uh, it's, it's, it's too early to take a call on that. Probably things will be clear in the next 24 hours or so. Biplop Day, what, what reports are you picking up on the ground, Biplop Day? Uh, you know, because uh, as let me tell our viewers once again that Biplop Day and our team, Biplop Day is our correspondent, Northeast Live correspondent in Garo Hills, and our team from Shillong, uh, full team from Shillong, where in Garo Hills covering, bringing you minute to minute live coverage. People up there, what are you picking up from the ground now? Where are these three independent MLAs? Are they in the Conrad Sangma camp or are they within the Mukul Sangma camp? What's going on? Well, uh, negotiations, are, negotiations are currently on. And uh, of the three candidates, the most likely two candidates that uh, possibly would align with the NPP uh, would be the one from Wagesek. Natuvel uh, S. Barak and uh, the other one from Ro Rocharpara, the one who defeated the deputy, uh, the, the CEM of uh, the previous EC, Dipul Marak. Uh, Arvind Stone was, uh, had also applied for an NPP ticket but was denied. Uh, he stood as an independent and defeated the CEM. So we expect him to be aligning himself with the NPP uh, as well as uh, the Natwell S. Barak, he too, we expect, would be joining the NPP soon. Uh, with, with respect to uh, Akhtar Ali, who won from Zigzag, we are not really sure because uh, he's been a long time congressman. So, obvious, uh, obvious thing is that he would uh, possibly speak with uh, the Congress leadership before he takes any decision. No, Bipla, uh, Bipla, you see, we, we have seen that the elections were keenly fought. But do you think now there will be a keen fight uh, among the NPP and the Congress uh, to bring the three independents to their fold? How keen is this battle going to be, the post-result battle? Uh, from, from, how, from how the you know, things have been played out, uh, there is just that one feeling that nobody really wants to take on the GHDC as of now in this present form because of the fact that, uh, you know, the employees have to be paid 33 months of salaries and uh, you know there have been cases of corruption that are being investigated uh, so we we had you know a, a very tingly feel that uh, the congress didn't really put up uh, the effort that it needed to you know to win a, a you know a complete mandate right however it's, <coughs> that is what we felt right i'll go for a short break when i come back i'll go straight to mr bernard marak uh, who is in the spotlight today for winning the Tura seat. And we'll also go to Congress leader Amparin Ningdo and, of course, uh, veteran political leader from Meghalaya, state president of the NPP and Rajya Sabha MP, Dr. Karluki, is still with us. Don't go away. I'll be right back. Welcome back. I'll go straight to Mr. Bernard Marak joining me from Tura. Mr. Bernard Marak, uh, now everybody wants to know what will the two BJP legislators you, will do now, you as well as your colleague. Now the question is, uh, 
are you going to team up with the NPP to form the council administration? You, in any case, are part of the MDA coalition, isn't it? It is the decision of our leaders. We will abide by the decision of our leaders, and we are not making any decision at this point. And it's not that it's not mandatory that we need to uh, tie up with NPP or Congress. It's nothing like that. So it will all depend upon the decision of our leaders. Uh, but one thing is very clear. Yes, we will stick to the principle of BJP. That will be the anti-corruption. And what we have raised in our manifesto will be following those points, point by point, point in next five years. Very interesting statement, Nabarone. He says that you, you heard Burden Barak saying it's not mandatory that, you know, just because we are, we are a coalition in the state, it's not mandatory that we'll be a coalition in Garo Hills Council. Absolutely. The Meghalaya BJP has been maintaining a very tough stand uh, led by the state BJP president, Ernest Maury. Uh, BJP was the first one, not Congress. BJP was the first one to point out alleged corruption in the JHADC. JHADC have filed RTIs, uh, taken the issue to the party high command, have time and again come openly uh, in the media uh, to the extent of forcing the NPP and even the Chief Minister Conrad Sangma to say that the BJP is free to walk out of the coalition uh, if, if if it wants to. So, so clearly, uh, now that uh, the, the NPP uh, is with 11 seats, the BJP 2, Congress 12, we have a fractured verdict. Yeah. Uh, the BJP definitely cannot uh, uh, go with wide uh, open arms uh, to the NPP because, after all, it was the BJP uh, which had, you know, in a way opened the Pandora's box as far as the alleged corruption is concerned. Absolutely. Now, now Mr. Barnard Marak, you know, another thing, you know, despite the anti-incumbency and non-payment of salaries to council staff for 33 months, the Congress could not reach the halfway mark. How do you explain this? See, the strategy was different this time because uh, they were playing at the 50% of the voters' uh, that uh, strategy. And you'll find that the NGOs have called a ban then in most of the places where the voters are more than 1,400, 1,500 like that, they put only one EVM in the rural areas. So they were actually, the strategy was to win, uh, the, to bring out only 50% of the voters. And the strategy was almost successful in most of the constituencies. But they failed in Tura because we knew what they were planning. And we had to plan it in the other way so that we could win. Even though it is a very, uh, very small margin, but we had to win because this is a chief minister's area. Right. Uh, we'll go to Dr. Karluki. But, but Mr. Bernard Marak, what is the broad message? Mr. Marak, what is the broad message from this Garo Hills District Council verdict? Uh, it's like money talks. And power still plays a vital role in the election. And... Most of the uh, candidates, most of the political parties <coughs> lack in strategies. So that is uh, where most of the seats, uh, many uh, dynamic leaders could not come up. Right. Uh, Dr. Karluki, if is there, yes. Uh, Dr. Karluki, uh, you, you, I don't know whether you heard uh, Mr. Bernard Marak, your coalition partner, but uh, the person who defeated your candidate in Tura today. Now, he said that it is not mandatory on the part of the BJP to go with the NPP in the Garo Hills District Council. So you have some work to do there. Well, that is their, you know, I have nothing to say. It is their party, <clears throat> it's their decision. But isn't it, but Hello? PP, yeah, you're tr I, I accept your point. You are saying that it is their party, it is their decision. But why I am asking you this question, why many people will also like to know because you are in the coalition in the state, so the normal minimum expectation is that you will go together and you will work together and resolve your differences. Yeah, the thing is, I heard also Mr. Bernard saying that he will leave it to his leader. So let his leader decide. So, but 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 it is going to be it is it is going to be something which will be keenly watched. Do you think that will reflect that will have an impact? on the MDA coalition, suppose the BJP in Garo Hills do not go with the NPP, is it going to impact in any way as far as the overall state politics is concerned? Will it going to, is it going to impact the coalition? 
No, no, no. It will not impact the collision. So that means you are viewing, you are keeping things separate. You are keeping the state politics separate. Yeah. You are looking at the council politics separately. You see, the thing is, is, is their party, is their decision. <clears throat> but saying that it will impact the state, I don't see that it will impact the state. Okay. Uh, now, Mr. Mr. Bernard Marak, also a lot of people will now want to know, what will be your role as a councillor from Tura, the home turf of Chief Minister Conrad Sangma? Tura will be seeing a massive change in the next five years, uh, not in, only in terms of a district council, but also in terms of a centre funds being rooted to the public, to the grassroots level. We will also try to uh, avail the centre <coughs> funds which are not actually reaching the people in general. Uh, we will uh, reactive, uh, this one. We will try to root it for, uh, to the grassroots. At the same time, district council, we, we have so many issues. The scheduled areas has been manipulated and so many non schedules has been introduced in the district council. So we will be trying to rectify all these issues and we will also try to bring out a new uh, electoral role in the district council and we will also try to frame a new rule in the district council in the line of KHADC. Right. Okay. Uh, let me go once again to you, Biplab Day. Uh, Biplab, you know, I mean... Everybody starting for everybody in the ruling combination, starting from the chief minister, have admitted that there was a lot of anti incumbency, uh, like mismanagement, financial mismanagement in the Garo Hills District Council, non payment of salaries to the council staff, lack of development. Do you think it is now going to be a huge challenge if the NPP is able to work out a coalition, if the NPP is able to take control of the Garo Council now? Do you think it will be a huge challenge for them now? to fulfill the aspirations of the people. <clears throat> scenario, you know, more or less, almost all the independent members, as well as, you know, you know by, by default, uh, the BJP too, will be in talks with the, uh, with the NPP, you know, former government. Uh, even uh, the BJP, uh, MLA from uh, Chilong, AL Hex has also come uh, both saying that the Congress is not going to be uh, spoken to in terms of uh, support. Uh, that he's come out with a statement today. So uh, I don't see any reason as to why the NPP is going to have a, a very difficult time in uh, forming uh, the GHBC company. Now, how do you look at it? Uh, because my question was slightly different. My, uh, I, was, I was asking this question whether it will be a huge challenge for the NPP to fulfill the hopes and aspirations of the people because uh, the stakes are very high because the entire election was fought on the plank of non-development, uh, on the plank of corruption, on the plank of non-payment of salaries to the staff. So in any incumbent party which forms the government in this case, assume that the NPP is able to stitch up a coalition again in Garo Hills. Do you think uh, it will be a huge challenge for uh, Conrad Sangma and his representatives to fulfill the hopes of the people? See, Vasbir, I'll put it like that. You had asked uh, Mr. Bernard, uh, Bernard Malak a short while back, what are, the, what are the other takeaways from this verdict in GHADC? I think uh, something else that uh, struck <coughs> us today is that uh, UDP, UDP, a party from the Khasi Hills, Khasi Jente Hills region, uh, fought in Garo Hills, fought in as many as 18 to 19 seats. And it's very interesting, Vasbir, uh, some of the stats uh, in West Garo Hills, North Garo Hills, one or two seats in East Garo Hills. Uh, the UDP is, uh, is distant, uh, is, is a third or a fourth and has uh, managed to garner sizable number of votes, four, four and a half thousand votes, five thousand votes in some case. So, what it says is that, see, Garo Hills, it has been either the Congress or the NPP uh, for a decade and, 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 and for, for, for all uh, times. But what it says, UDP also getting sizable number of votes says the voters cannot be taken for granted anymore. This is maybe a, this is a good show by the UDP, even if it is in, say, for the seat Tura. Tura, the UDP can, of course, uh, Bernard Marak is the winner from Tura with 8,942 votes he has garnered. Second is NPP with 8,397. But UDP has got 4,272 votes. That's not let a me, small That is figure. a very significant point you are making, Naburun Goswami. Uh, let, me, let me go to you, Dr. Karluki, on this. Uh, you know, Garo Hill says a total of 24 assembly seats. If uh, I'm right, 24 assembly seats, Garo yes. Hill says 
24 assembly seats. It's a huge number. In a 60 member assembly, Dr. Karluki, 24 seats are from the Garo Hills. Now, uh, in these elections, if we, if, we, if we take this as a barometer, your party has won 11 seats, the Congress has won 12 seats, as Nabarun was saying, even the UDP and other parties have garnered a large, uh, sizable vote chunk, sizable chunk of the vote share. Now, that means your party, the NPP, cannot take anything for granted in the days ahead. Well, election and election was beer. Nobody should take election for granted. If you take election for granted, means you're losing. So, what will be what will be your strategy to improve upon how things have unfolded today? Well, we will try to work hard. We will try to sort out issues, and then let's see. All right. Uh, let me once again turn to you, uh, Mr. Bernard Marak. You said that as a councillor, your focus will be to bring about rapid development in Tura. But don't forget the fact that you have the chief minister representing that area. But my question is slightly different. As the councillor, will you be able to do things as you wish without the support and cooperation of the state government? See. The MMN is just around the corner. I am a BJP leader today, but before that, I am one of those who have signed a peace pact, the agri tax for settlement with the gov uh, government of India and the state government in 2014. So that agreement is under process, and with the amendment to the sixth schedule, the entire system will be changed. And it's not mandatory that everything has to be rooted through state government. Okay, I don't know whether Amparin Lingdo is with us. Uh, but, uh, but Biplop Day, uh, you know, basically at the end of the day, 24 seats, uh, you know, is a large uh, number of seats in, in the state assembly, in a 60 member state assembly. So, these 24 seats, what is, how do you assess? Because now it is neck to neck contest we have seen today between the Congress and the NPP. BJP has also won two seats and uh, cornered a large chunk of the vote share in several other seats. UDP, as Nabaran was saying, has also got uh, a, a, you know, a sizable vote, vote share. Now, how do you see things pan up or unfold uh, in the next uh, couple of months or in the run-up to the next assembly elections? Uh, if you, I would just like to go back into history. In 2013, uh, there were only two NPP legislators. Okay, despite the fact that uh, you know prior to that they had won uh, a sizable number of MTC seats, but uh, these things changed in 2013, in 2015, and 2015 actually became an indicator to 2018 because uh, the NPP did fare much better than the Congress, and in the state assembly, in the state uh, state elections, it you know it it was neck to neck in terms of the number of seats. We expect this elections to also be a precursor to what is a you know to the upcoming 2023 elections uh, the npp really needs to you know buck up and uh, look at ways that it can uh, you know contain uh, contain the uh, you know the malaise that has actually gone into their uh, system the if you if you look at uh, the cm statements he had, he had said he was overconfident of the fact that, that they would win about 20 seats whereas uh, they landed almost half that and uh, all campaigns of the NPP were huge campaigns. You know, you had people you know, by the thousands come and be present there. But that uh, number is not really translated into votes. We that's, expect that's the regional parties to <clears throat> uh, the UDP, the GNC, these will also be making an impact in the upcoming to the 2023 elections. Because uh, UDP for now has taken, uh, you know, GHDC or rather the, the Garo Hills, you know, are a little seriously prior to you know prior they wouldn't really spend too much of time but this time we saw the entire leadership come here spend time speak to people and uh, they even tried and you know pushed candidates from their end that is the reason as to why you have uh, you know sizable number of udp uh, votes coming in we expect you know this trend to continue in the future as well also also so, uh, the mp Yes, no problem. NPP also, really needs to buck up. Also, uh, right. if, if, yes, no if, if I can ask uh, Biplab, Biplab, uh, can we expect the BJP, even though eventually it may end up 
uh, you know, aligning with the NPP like in, this, in, in the state coalition. But can we expect the BJP to act a bit pricey initially? For instance, uh, uh, the BJP MLA El Hek uh, today said that, uh, well, uh, the Meghalaya in charge, Dr. Chuba Ao, would visit Tura and sit with the elected MDCs and take a decision on the future course of action. So the BJP is giving enough indications that it's not natural for it to ally with the NPP. That's what so, Bernard Marak had also said. Yeah. Yes, that is true. But uh, the, the other option that you have is the Congress. So either, you know, it is, uh, uh, I think uh, one option would be for the Congress to support a BGP-led government. Okay, you know, th yeah. that, that's the one other way. way. Out, yeah. Otherwise, I, I don't see any other reason as to how things yeah. will work out. Right. Uh, final comments from you, Dr. Karluki. Uh, you know, very interesting observation that a lot of people may have attended the large NPP rallies, but all those people, uh, you know, may not have converted into votes. Uh, do you think uh, that is one area where you have to work seriously? Yes. Uh, looking at the crowd attending the election, usually it translates into vote. So I think the main reason is we'll have to sit and retrospect like what uh, our uh, leader and chief minister has said the anti competency factor is one of the factor but even then we'll not take it just just at that we'll go further to investigate what is what is wrong absolutely final comments from you mr bernard marak will you still continue your effort at combating corruption are you con going to keep on raising these issues now that you are not just the state president of the BJP, state vice president of the BJP, I'm sorry, you are also the elected councillor from the prestigious Tura seat. Mr. Marak. Yes, we will not stop uh, our fight against corruption because uh, we have joined BJP because BJP is the only party that, is, that has a zero tolerance against corruption. And today, in Tura, you'll find that the support that has come from the tribal people is because of that ideology, the zero tolerance. People are not scared or people are not ashamed of showing themselves as a BJP member. The way that the people have rallied in, uh, in last Saturday and even today, it is a clear sign that people have accepted BJP as their own party now. Oh, yeah. So they the know, fight they, against they, corruption they will continue the at the district level, uh, in the district council level, and also in the state level. Okay. Uh, that is a very significant people have come to accept the BJP. That is what uh, uh, Bernard Marak is saying. Biplop uh, Day, if you can hear me, uh, how, how many days it may, do you think? Okay, uh, Nabarun, uh, that's a very interesting statement. Bernard Marak is saying final comments from you, 20 seconds. Yeah, uh, he's saying that BJP has come to be, ex people have come to accept Absol the BJP. Absolutely. Uh, two seats for the BJP is no main task in Garo Hills. And uh, also, Vasbir, uh, one thing that this GHDC polls, the results have done is that uh, it, 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 it shows that the, the 2023 battle is wide open. If the NPP was feeling complacent, there's no way uh, it could uh, behave the same. Uh, well, Garo Hills, both the Congress, the Congress has caught up, even overtaken it as far as the council polls are concerned. Even Khasi Hills, we know the issues afflicting the state. So clearly the NPP definitely has its task cut out going into the assembly elections. The next Absolutely, elections. NPP has its task cut out and this elections results in Garo Hills will enthuse the opposition congress no end that has been already indicated dr mukul sangma says but very very pragmatic very very uh, uh, statesman like uh, observation from dr mukul sangma who said that uh, forming the uh, forming the executive committee at the garo hills district council is not the main aim the aim is to keep raising the issues for which the congress stands uh, that is what dr mukul sangma said we have to wait and watch uh, i thank all my panelists for participating in this discussion and of course this is a, has been a very interesting election this is a grassroots level uh, 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 politics but uh, of which a uh, lot of interest is being shown not just in Meghalaya but in the entire northeastern region. Council elections have become a focus of attention perhaps because of the spread of the social media and interest of channels like Northeast Live in these uh, elections in the councils that is grassroots level politics. I thank once again all my panelists for participating in the program and the viewers for watching the show. Good night and goodbye.